Guys, welcome back and good morning from not only Cunard's Queen Elizabeth, which you can see everyone has left already this morning, but also from the port of Punta Arenas here in Costa Rica. Now, this is a brand new port for me, a brand new country for me, and this is our final port before we head over to transit all the way through the old locks of the Panama Canal. So, yeah, there's a lot going on in my mind this morning, but I cannot wait. But look, let me give you a quick look around what I can see right now from the ship. Then we're gonna head down and hopefully get the best Eggs Benedict that I've had at sea so far. And then join me back inside and I'll tell you about the plan for today because today I'm doing something pretty different to what I would normally do. And I'm taking you with me. So yeah, let's have a look. Welcome to Costa Rica. This is what my year at sea is all about. Waking up, every single morning, somewhere different. Sometimes that means waking up in the middle of the ocean and other times like today, it means waking up in a brand new country that I've never ever been to before. Let me show you all different angles from around the ship so that you can get a feel for what it was like waking up right here in Punta Arenas. Now, did you know that the unofficial slogan of Costa Rica is Pura Vida, which stands for pure life. Now Costa Rica believes that this symbolises the simple, cheerful outlook and lifestyle of the people here. And would you believe it? Costa Rica has many, many times been widely known as one of the happiest countries in the world. Anyway, another type of person who would be happy here is someone who doesn't like leaving the ship because look at how quiet all of these top decks are. However, as you're about to find out, we are not staying on board. We are going ashore for a day very unlike anything that we've experienced so far. Unfortunately, I went for breakfast and totally forgot to take a picture of it, so I'm not able to show you my eggs benedict this morning, but I'll get you down in the Queen's room. Right, breakfast done and off to a good start so far, I would say. Now, in terms of where I am now, I am down in the Queen's room, which is down on deck two and also deck three. So behind me at the moment, you should see deck two, which is the level that we're on, and also deck three, which is like a mezzanine balcony level that, that goes down one side of the room. Now, the reason why I thought I'd come here is to fill you in on the fact that this is the room that you come for the famous afternoon tea on Cunard. So every single day, both on a sea day and also a port day at 3 p.m., you can come in here. It's all dressed in white tablecloths and yeah, you get, yeah, it's good. The only thing, I struggled to get clotted cream the other day, but first world problem, all round pretty good. If you watch my sea day video from on board this ship, I will show you all about that because yeah, it's quite a lot to see. Now, anyway, today I am doing something a little bit different to what I would usually do. Now, I very rarely would take you guys on a shore excursion because I much prefer just coming off of a cruise ship, wearing usually my running shoes and just exploring and seeing what I can see. Now, today, I don't think I'm going to do that for a number of reasons. Number one, because I've never, ever, ever been to this place before, so I just had no clue what to expect. And number two, there's been a couple of signs that have come out from Cunard that have suggested that maybe it's not the best idea to do this one um, independently. Now, one of those signs was that in the Daily Programme, they've sent out a bit of a warning just to say, look, it's maybe not... That, uh, not that it's not the safest of places, but just that things have happened in the past that you should be aware of. And secondly, just due to the fact that there's not much local to the port, apparently. So I have decided, in a complete flip of the table, to book on to one of the most expensive excursions available today. Now, the reason why I've done that is that I'm hoping it should be pretty amazing. So today I am going to take you guys on the Forest Skywalk, which consists of a coach journey out to the forest. I'll then be, I think, hiking through the forest to get to the rope bridges or the suspended bridges, which are at the very top of the canopy to hopefully see some incredible wildlife here. Now, I saw a fact yesterday that Costa Rica has 500,000 different species of wildlife, which represents 5% of the world's total wildlife species. And they have a land mass of like 0.03% of the world's land mass. So from a concentration point of view, it puts Costa Rica within the top 20 most biodiverse countries in the whole world. So I'm hoping that today we should see a decent amount. 
hopefully not a snake, but I'm hoping that we'll see a decent amount of everything else. So yeah, look, plan for me. That excursion leaves at one o'clock. It's currently only the morning, as you know, so I'm just gonna go have a wander around the terminal, see what, see what the state of play is here, because I think I'll come back from that excursion and we'll basically be ready to leave on the ship because that'll be about five o'clock. So I'm just gonna head out into the town immediately local to the terminal, see what's there, and then come back and get ready to go walking. It's time for my favourite time of day and that is the point where we walk down that gangway and make landfall in our brand new country for today. Now where the cruise ships dock in Punta Arenas, you will see that you've got quite a long docking space between the ship and the shore. Now that is pretty simple for me, all I have to do is begin walking and quickly you will burn off some of your breakfast calories. There is also a little land train that takes you the length of this pier. You'll see that later in the video. Now immediately after passing those musicians at the end of the pier, I came across this incredibly tired looking city map. And I didn't have the highest expectations of the day ahead because I thought, oh, if the tourist map isn't even in good condition, what hopes do I have? However, how wrong was I? This building here had ultra high speed Wi-Fi that I could use to phone home, which was so welcome after the last few days at sea. And it was a team of volunteers who have designed these Punta Arenas walking guide maps, which essentially allow you to go on a fully self-guided, free of charge, walking tour all around the city. It was such a lovely welcome. A lot of cruise ports that you go to, there'll be people selling you maps, they'll be trying to sell you excursions ashore. None of that was going on here. All I could see when I got off the cruise ship were local people who were wanting all of the visitors to have a great day here. It was so, so refreshing, especially for the part of our itinerary which, to be honest, isn't the richest part of the world to begin with. Now, I started off my walking tour by having a wander around the streets, a little wander around the shops, and checking out just the overall feel of the place. Now, anyone that's followed my channel for a while will know that I hate snakes. Snakes are common here, and you can imagine my horror when I got hit by this wire, because all I could imagine was that it was a snake. Thankfully, it wasn't. Now, continuing the tour, I then headed along to check out Punta Arenas Cathedral. Now this cathedral is a Roman Catholic church and it was founded in 1902. Pretty modern cathedral. Unfortunately, I didn't get inside because it was closed at the point of me walking past. It was due to open again in the afternoon. But as we know, I would then be on my shore excursion. Fun thing that I found so interesting about Punta Arenas, look at the drainage system at the side of the road. If that doesn't tell you how much rain this place gets, then <laughs> I don't know what will. I would hate to be here during a tropical storm. It must be horrendous. They even have these tsunami warnings everywhere all over the city. Anyway, let's head down to the front where you'll see your cruise ship docked out at the end of that really long pier. Now, let me show you what the streets look like at the front. You can see you've got some more well-known brands here. For example, you've got Pizza Hut. You've got a couple of shops that you would also know that do also exist in the US. And then I thought this was really cool. This beach right beside the cruise port is fully accessible. So it's a disability friendly beach, which is awesome because I've met so many people on my trips who struggle to get onto beaches when they're in wheelchairs. It was really, really cool. Anyway, it was then time to head back to the ship to get out on the excursion this afternoon, which is where I hit, unfortunately, the first slight problem of queuing to get back onto the ship. Not even onto the ship, onto the pier. Look at the length of this queue, and no, it doesn't end there. It only finished there because people were trying to remain in the shade. It continued over here 
it was like Disneyland waiting to get back through. Everybody seemed to be waiting for that little land train, so as soon as I said that I wasn't waiting for the train, I was very quickly ushered up the side of the queue to enjoy this view, and then to enjoy, hmm, not so much enjoy, this view as I then walked all the way up in the blistering sunshine. One thing I love about Cunard is all the little touches. For example, the Cunard branded parasols, the chilled iced water waiting for you on the dock. Really, really nice touch. Anyway, see you in the cabin. Okay, so one of the good things about booking an excursion that leaves at one o'clock is that I've been able to nip up to the buffet and grab lunch up there, which is great. So, time to go. Time to go into the forest, which, yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous about it, I'm not going to lie. Now, on Cunard, I've got my excursion ticket here, ready to go. And, yeah, the tour leaves at 1pm, it comes back at 5.30pm, and that coincides perfectly with Sail Away. Now, in terms of how I booked my excursion, so this excursion was $89 per person and I booked this on board. So once I got on the ship, there was still availability and I jumped on it. Now, I was actually split between doing two different excursions. One was the Forest Skywalk and the other one was a, like a tropical mangrove tour that you went out on a boat and sailed up into the mangroves. Now, the reason why I chose this one was that I think there should be good wildlife on this one because you're actually up in the canopy that goes over the forest. Now, on that note, I should add that where we're going, so I've made a few notes here just so I can get it right, but we're going to the Tarcoles River and the part that we're going to is a protected biological reserve. So they've said on the ship that it's very, very likely that we should see some good wildlife today. So yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Now, today's tour, we're going to cover three suspended cable bridges that stretch for up to 330 foot in length and height-wise, they're 126 foot off the ground. So, not sure what this is going to turn into today, because as you know, this year I have, I think I've conquered my fear of heights, but I guess we're going to find out today. But yeah, as I probably have mentioned in a previous video, it's rainy season here in Costa Rica at the moment, so that is, what, towards the end of August. So my cabin steward has very kindly supplied me with a Cunard branded poncho to take up the hill with me so hopefully that's going to keep me let's be honest you guys as well nice and dry otherwise I can't show you very much and I've also got ready to what louse myself or cover myself in insect repellent this is actually insect repellent from Asda the supermarket in the UK so I'm hoping <laughs> that this is going to be good enough for the Costa Rica wildlife out in the forest but look I'm gonna go and get sprayed up now. I will then head down and show you guys the bus or whatever kind of vehicle we're traveling on. And let's head out into the tropical forests of Costa Rica. Okay, here we go guys. Time to leave the ship over these Queen Elizabeth branded rugs. Yet again, this time we're not gonna walk around the town. We are going into the forest, which I was very excited but also pretty nervous about. You can see all the buses here are marked Turismo, which essentially marks the bus as a tourist vehicle for safety reasons. Now, let me show you where you get on this bus. You actually board the bus on the pier directly in the shadow of your cruise ship, which means look at this chaos. You've got the land train coming up, you've got other buses, you've got people walking. It's all round a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, we headed away from Queen Elizabeth at more or less bang on 1pm and we very quickly left the tourist centre by the cruise port behind and entered what I can probably only describe as a much more local, much more residential type part of Costa Rica. It really was fascinating seeing how the landscape changed as we moved from the cruise port through the houses, we then rejoined the water again and we passed all these roadside bars, restaurants, cafes before then arriving at our first port of call, which I, to be honest, had absolutely no idea about. Let me show you the sign that we could see from the bus. You may be able to see that, you may not, but it basically says crocodiles. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so in terms of where we're at now, we've just got out of the bus and now heading on to what is affectionately known as Crocodile Bridge. So yeah, hopefully we'll get to see a few down here and back on the bus and up to the top of the hill. Okay, can we talk for just a moment about health and safety? These animals are pretty deadly. They can swim. There's nothing stopping them climbing up the embankment and coming to eat a human. <laughs> Not overly comforting. And then you look at where this attraction is. It's right on the roadside with nothing short of the biggest trucks on the planet speeding past. If this was in the UK, <laughs> health and safety officials would go absolutely berserk. Anyway, I then wobbled over here with very wobbly knees, definite hard pass from me, back on to the comfort of the bus where I checked there were no reptiles waiting for us. After about another 20 minutes or so on the bus, we then landed here and we got out for another stop, which was completely unannounced on the itinerary. It was very unexpected. You might be thinking, hmm, this looks nice for a forest itinerary. Yes, it was a four-star hotel. Why on earth were we stopping at a four-star hotel on what should have been a forest skywalk day? Let me show you around and I'll tell you a little more. Okay, that crocodile bridge Absolutely amazing, that was so cool. Now, we've now stopped at a resort, which I wasn't ex wasn't expecting. They've said this is for like toilets and water, um, and they've given us sort of five, 10 minutes to stop here. I'm hoping it's quick because at the end of the day, you don't pay the money to go on a shore excursion to stop in a resort. It's a lovely resort, granted, but I'm not on holiday in a resort, so hopefully we're gonna be back in the bus and then straight up to the start of the hike. Now the hike that we're going on is actually a downhill hike, so we get the bus all the way to the top and then we walk down for about an hour. So hopefully the next time I speak to you, we won't be at an all-inclusive hotel and we will be on the other side of a bus journey and we'll be hiking, hopefully down the hill and hopefully seeing the suspension bridges. So yeah, let's go and get back in the bus. Here we are, back on the bus. You can see the clock at the front now says 2.36. So we had been travelling for quite some time to get here with all the stops. Now I went from laughing about the fact that we were at a four star resort to suddenly wishing that I could go back because very quickly the drive from the hotel entered what can only be described as the jungle. Look at how lush this is. And then it was time to get off and it was time to enter wildlife territory. Right, so we're now out the bus and about to begin walking down, well, one would imagine, here. So I'm now recovered in insect repellent and, yeah, ready to go. Right, into the jungle we go. The first thing that we had to do on the left-hand side was pick up a walking aid, which you can see those bamboo sticks over on the left. And then we got our first wildlife encounter, which was... Well, ants, to be honest, nothing more exotic than that. However, I've never seen ants carrying these big leaves before, so actually, while it was only ants, they were still pretty cool. When we were in the forest, some of the views down the coastline and looking over the land were absolutely beautiful. Look at this view, looking all the way down the coastline, back towards the direction the ship was in. 
Now, thinking a little bit more about where we were, on the way up to the forest, we were given a bit of a what to do conversation from our tour guide, what if you encounter a snake, what if you encounter wildlife. So we were all very, very excited for what we might see while we were on the forest walk. This is the first of the bridges that we went across. What I would ask you to pay particular attention to is how much the bridge is moving. I thought I was over my fear of heights, but I was shaking like a leaf. In fact, shaking like the leaf that those ants were carrying. I, to be perfectly honest, was pretty scared walking over here. I thought I would have been fine, but unfortunately it wasn't as calm as I had expected to be. Now, we had a number of bridges to get across. The more that I did, the more comfortable I got, but I would say, if you're scared of heights, please, please, please book a different excursion because I was trembling so badly the whole way across. I still can't believe that I managed to record going over these bridges and record it in the forest because, <laughs> yes, by the way, more ants. But anyway, the height of the bridges, yeah, I was not the most comfortable person on the planet. <laughs> it's probably the under-exaggeration of the century. Anyway, let me leave you with a little bit of footage from another bridge and I'll catch up with you shortly. Okay, so annoyingly, wildlife today has been mega limited. It's probably, probably a stretch when we've had ants, ants and more ants. And to be fair, while it's only ants, they are actually pretty impressive to watch. So it's not the end of the world. Apparently it's just a bit too hot today for a lot of the other wildlife. But I don't know. Let's keep everything crossed because we're not done yet. Now, I thought it wasn't over yet. Nobody said it was over yet. However, right after recording that last clip, we were then very quickly led up this path, which unfortunately then made us climb the hill back out of the forest where we found the bus. So the bus had moved to meet us further down the hill. So the forest walk was now over and we made our way here. Okay, you guys, we're now at the part of every cruise line shore excursion that I just hate. We have now arrived at this souvenir shop, which apparently is one of the biggest souvenir shops in Costa Rica. So, <laughs> yeah, I bet someone somewhere is getting a lovely gift for bringing bus upon bus upon bus of cruise ship tourists here every single day. But look, I'll catch up with you when we get back on board Queen Elizabeth about today's excursion and whether or not I've enjoyed it and whether or not I think it's been worth it. But for now, let's get in here and see what souvenirs you could buy if you were heading over to Costa Rica. Let's head inside and explore the biggest and apparently the best gift shop in all of Costa Rica. I am a believer that there is a place in the world for gift shops do I think they should be bringing so many people on cruise line excursions to this one? Ugh, to be honest, I would probably rather have spent more time in Costa Rica searching for wildlife than in the shop. However, let's look at some of the things you could have bought. First up, you could have a free sample of some fruit, or you could head over here to buy some coffee, or have a free sample. Costa Rica is one of the largest coffee producers in the world, so it's worth, while you're here, have a sip. Anyway, let's move inside. What else could you buy? How about Costa Rica branded jumpers? How about 
Costa Rica shot glasses, Costa Rica lighters, Costa Rica pipes, Costa Rica bowls, Costa Rica key rings, a Costa Rica branded sloth, a Christmas bauble, a whole host of Christmas baubles, or how about a Costa Rica branded mug, maybe a Costa Rica branded cow, or a wooden spoon, or a Costa Rica branded lady, how about a coaster, or a pet snake, or a toucan, or maybe a Costa Rica plate, a pen, more magnets, a hat, or maybe even a t-shirt branded with the Crocodile River that we went to earlier. This place had everything. I've never seen a gift shop with such a huge variety. Anyway, after half the bus was bled dry for all their spending money, we then headed back to Queen Elizabeth where we could enjoy a little bit of downtime prior to sailing out of port. I'll see all of you back on board up in the cabin. Okay, so hopefully you can tell that I am now back in my cabin back on Queen Elizabeth. Now, before I go and see Sail Away, and I'm obviously going to take you up and show you Sail Away as well, I just wanted to catch up on today. We'll cover the plan for tonight now that we're back on the ship way after Sail Away. I haven't even thought about that yet. But I did want to just kind of wrap up on the excursion today and also just cover off one other bit of like excursion admin before we head up and do sail away. Now let's do admin first and then we can actually talk about today. Now quite a few of you guys who follow along actually don't cruise or have never cruised before. I always love that. I always love when people who have never been on a cruise follow this channel but people usually message and ask about like the admin side of things. So how do you know your excursion leaves at one o'clock? How do you know where to go? The ship's huge. How do you know where to get off? All those sorts of things. And that's what I try and answer in a lot of my vlogs. Now, one thing that I didn't tell you earlier was how did I know where to go to get on my excursion? Now, it's really easy. Basically, in the daily schedule, which is that document that I plug in basically every single one of my videos, there's a whole section in here for if you're booked on a shore experience with us today, here's where to go and when. So I knew that because I was on the Forest Skywalk, I had to be 12.50 and I had to be like outside the ship so yeah really really straightforward so never never worry about that usually excursions are dead straightforward and easy enough to get onto. now let's talk about today because do you know what i've had such a great day today excursions as you know are usually not my they're just usually not my bag i'm usually never really into them and don't really enjoy them but i've really really liked today and i think it's due to the fact that we actually did something today that I wouldn't have done if I just threw my shoes on and went for a walk. Now, did I think the experience was worth $85? As one, probably yes. If I had put a family on there and I had paid 400, I'd maybe, I'd maybe think twice because it's a bit like a big adult's playground but going through, <laughs> going through the forest. Now, what I would say is that I think from a transport point of view, it was all good. From a bridge walk point of view, it was all good. The forest was awesome. Unfortunately, we didn't really see much wildlife. I mentioned earlier we saw ants. We saw loads of ants. They were everywhere. But there were no macaws. There were no monkeys. There were no kind of anything that I expected to see. We saw crocodiles, which to be fair, that that's probably worth it seeing the crocodiles. But due to the time of day, apparently it's just that it's too hot. So for that reason, all the monkeys and all the birds go away and take shelter, which that's fine, but it's maybe not ideal, to be honest, that the cruise line are selling you an excursion, teasing it with the wildlife side when actually in the afternoon they go to sleep anyway. So we literally saw nothing today in that forest. Now, the actual walk itself was great. I, I did really, really enjoy it. The element that I would say really, really, really took away from today was that gift shop. Honestly, it was almost comical wandering about in there and it was so expensive like so to buy a hoodie So by hoodie, I mean like a zipped hoodie 
where it's like a full length zip. It's obviously got a hood and it just says Costa Rica, which is like a typical tourist shop item. That was 65 US dollars. So six, five US dollars, which I honestly couldn't believe that that was the price, the price of something like that. So yeah, going back to what I said earlier, I hope someone's really benefiting from um, the cruise line dumping all these buses there. It was just, honestly, it was bus after bus after bus of people and people were buying in there. I just, yeah, personally, I don't get it because stuff felt really, really expensive. But as I mentioned earlier, there was a branded, Costa Rica branded anything. If you could think about it, it was in that shop and it said Costa Rica on it. So yeah, and that shop does what it says in the tin. You want an item, you get yourself in there and you absolutely can grab one. Now, anyway, while the gift shop really cheapened it and really took away from it, I actually have really, really enjoyed it. So would I jump on another excursion when we get to our next port of call in Aruba? Probably not, or well, not probably not, definitely not, but was it good today for somewhere that I just had no idea what to do? Yeah, yeah, I've really, really enjoyed it. Now, anyway, time to sail out because it's, and I have no way of telling you what time it is, but it's irrelevant anyway for this video, so it's sail away time. <laughs> and come and join me up in the top deck and let us look at what sail away is looking like tonight. I know what you're thinking, it's late in the day and he hasn't had an ice cream yet, I hope he's okay. Well believe it or not, this monstrosity was from the soft serve ice cream machine, it tasted great but just looked pretty horrendous. Anyway, let's talk about Sail Away. This is our view, you can see we sailed out as the sun disappeared over the horizon. It was beautiful, beautiful timing. One bit of advice that I would give you for sailing out of a port like this in Costa Rica is that going back to our earlier point, remember that you're in a pretty biologically diverse part of the world. In other words, there's a lot of insects and quite a lot of flies. I feel as though I spent the majority of this sail away smacking various things and flicking various animals off my arms. <laughs> so yes, it's definitely worth remembering, pop on some insect repellent before you head up to those top decks. Anyway, let me leave you with some shots of what it looked like to sail out of this port and I'll see you back in the cabin to talk about the plan for tonight and also show you dinner. Can we just spend a minute talking about that sail away? That was beautiful. I absolutely, oh, so we were late leaving tonight. We were probably about 30 minutes late and I'm so glad we were because it meant that rather than having a daylight sail away, we had a perfect sunset sail away. And by the time the ship actually pivoted round to leave the port, it was night time. So I really enjoy that because you get to see what a city would look like if you were visiting at night which, yeah, is totally different to just looking at those beaches during the day. Now, anyway, sail away done, which means that we now need to think about the plan for tonight. So, on the daily planner tonight, I am planning to go to a guest entertainer that they've flown in from Vegas tonight. So, don't worry, it's not Adele fresh off the residency. It is Lisa Marie Smith, who is apparently doing a show tonight all about all the icons that have had residencies and performed in Vegas. So that should be quite good. She might actually do Adele, so that'll be cool. Annoyingly, you can't film or take any pictures in the shows here, so I'm gonna struggle to show you guys, but I'll, yeah, I mean, I'll let you know how it is. And then after that, I am going to go to Ballroom Blitz in 
the Queen's Room, which was basically um, like the ballroom dancing back in the ballroom again. Now, you might have heard my door knock there. That's my dinner getting delivered, so bear with me and I'll be right back and show you what I've got. Right, just like that, I'm back. Now, this might be about to go disastrously wrong. However, I'm going to show you what I've just ordered from room service because tonight, ugh, I'm having, again, one of those nights where I think I did this in one of my vlogs a few nights ago where I just wanted a night in the cabin. Now, tonight I decided that I don't really want to go into a formal dining room tonight and that's why I'm so glad that Cunard Room Service is so, well, cross everything. Up until now it's been so good because it means that if you feel like that you can just chill in here and then go to the show after. So, let's investigate. So this dish I could see actually when she brought it in. This is the superfood salad which is what, spinach, cucumber, avocado, tomato, mango I think, but yeah, looks good. I'm hoping that you can see, but looks decent. So I'm gonna have that to start. And then I'm going to move on to, oh, I mean that is gonna be a treat, but we'll come back to that. Then I'm gonna move over to spiced pork quesadillas, which actually, they look good as well. So they come with like, three little dips, which I can't really tilt it too much more without it cascading off the plate, but again, looks good. Oh, can anyone guess what my final dish is? I bet someone out there can. This is my becoming infamous side of french fries with my serving of mayonnaise, which is excellent. I love that I can order that and not look ridiculous, well not sound too ridiculous, but yeah, that's going to be my dinner tonight. And then after that, we'll head down and check out the show. Now, one thing that I'm also keen to do, but I don't know if I'll have time tonight, the pub down there, we went a few nights ago and we tried that Cunard beer. And by we, I mean you and I. Now, they also have an option on the menu that's like a beer flight where they have, the, you can try all three of the beers that are all Cunard branded for I think $7, which actually isn't a bad price at all. So maybe tonight, if I have time, I'll jump in there and we can try those three beers. Maybe just grab the three and take them along to the Queen's Room and then sit in there and watch the dancing with those drinks. Not sure how I'll look showing up at the Queen's Room with three drinks, but <laughs> maybe a little bit wild for Cunard. But yeah, look, let's go get this eaten now and then we'll head down and check out the show. Remember I told you earlier about the three beers that you can get to taste? Well here they are here, they're lined up really nicely on a serving board and the price of these, I just can't recommend them highly enough. Now I know what you're thinking, I wonder if he took them to the Queen's Room, like he said. Well, here's your answer. <laughs> here is my absolute favourite people watching view with my beers. Yes, I took my three drinks along to the Queen's Room and yes, I sat there and proudly enjoyed them all. Guys, would you believe it? It's one o'clock in the morning, which I did not expect to be saying to you on board this ship with how quiet it's been every night. So yeah, basically I took my drinks into the Queen's room and met up with a few of my friends that I've met on the ship and we just got chatting and it's now got to one o'clock and I'm now back in my room ready to turn in. Now, one thing that I did want to just mention to you really, really quickly before signing off tonight was just dress codes. Now, 
before coming on Cunard, I was terrified. <laughs> To be, to be perfectly honest, terrified of the dress codes because if you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I'm not the most formal of person on a cruise and I know that they have the formal nights and then they also have smart evening wear that you're expected to wear every night and yeah, I was just a little bit nervous because to be perfectly honest, I don't have that many smart items with me, especially being on cruises all of this year, like, I can't travel with loads and loads of formal wear because the majority of my cruise lines and the majority of my cruise ships don't require that. So, yeah, a few of you have probably watched my last clip when I'm wearing this t-shirt with, like, my overshirt. And you might be thinking that looked really, really casual for Cunard. Now, what I will say is that tonight, nobody pulled me up for that at all tonight, but personally, I did feel really, really casual. So I was also wearing my, so they're kind of similar to like a Converse type trainer. I also wore them, and to be honest, in comparison to everybody else downstairs, I definitely felt a little bit underdressed. So, yeah, not sure if I'll go for the t-shirt, open shirt combo again. But, yeah, if you watched that video before and thought, oh, maybe Cunard isn't that smart a cruise line, then, yeah, don't take that outfit as a judge of that because I think going forward I'll definitely need to wear a closed shirt every night. But, <laughs> anyway, that aside, dress code aside for now, that is us at the end of today's video. So, hopefully you have enjoyed seeing somewhere a little bit different and seeing what a cruise day looks like if you're visiting Costa Rica. Now, my next, oh, my next video, guys, honestly, we're about to enter the Panama Canal, which I can't wait. I can't wait for it, and I also can't believe it. So, the day after tomorrow, we will be entering the old locks of the Panama Canal, and we'll be doing a full transit all the way across into the Caribbean. So, next up, we'll be doing Panama together, and then straight after that, we'll be visiting Aruba for the day. So, yeah, hopefully you'll come along with me. If you'd like to do that, then jump down below, click subscribe, and make sure that your notifications are on, and you'll be told when my next video goes up. And while you're there, if you could give this a thumbs up, that would be amazing. But look, wherever you are in the world, Thank you so much for following along. I'm going to bed, so a very good night to you, and I'll catch up with you in my next video. Cheers, guys. Bye.